Hello and a very warm welcome to you to this week's Out and About. Now as you all saw, this year's International Yoga Day was a massive success, not just here in the United Kingdom, but of course all around the world as well. We were lucky enough to go to the Houses of Parliament for the launch of International Yoga Day 2016. Earlier this year, we had a fantastic international day of yoga and it really was international. So it gives us great pleasure to meet here today to talk about how we can move forward, which way next, what changes we can make and also congratulate ourselves on actually making sure that we had a fantastic international yoga day. A very famous yogini, person who practices yoga, once said that yoga actually is an act of kindness that moves humanity forward. And I'd like to think by just having the International Yoga Day, we actually managed to achieve that, even if it was just a little bit by all the different various things that went on, the lectures, the, the group participation. It was all inclusive basically with many many people who have not even been touched by yoga who were actually touched by it. So yes I would like to say that it did move humanity forward even if it was just a little bit. And we look forward to sharing our ideas today for the next one in making sure that it's just as fantastic if not better and also how much further we can reach out to other people. Well, 2015 was a phenomenal year because uh, after the Narendra Modi Ji's initiative of getting International Yoga Day um, uh, agreed by the United Nations as a special day, which is 21st of June every year, it was a start. However, if we're going to get yoga onto the NHS, into schools, we have to influence the people who matter, i.e. MPs, school governors, school um, hierarchies, so they can understand what is yoga, what is it going to be the benefit of yoga for their students or for the patients. Um, and so this is only the beginning. We've got a long way to go. We've got to ensure that the people who are, or people who are going to make the difference hear our message take on board, hear the influence that, 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 that has been created by other people in, the, in this fraternity. And that is what we're going to be hearing today from a lot of people who've done research and, um, and are actively involved in yoga in different spheres. So they can, they can relay their information to the people who matter. Well, I think the importance of such an event overall are to provide international understanding of the benefit of yoga as well to celebrate the proliferation of yoga which is occurring across the globe. What I'm going to talk about and my interest and what I'd also like to see us focus on in part in this upcoming yoga day is the integration of yoga into the health system. Why? Because I think that yoga is demonstrating unprecedented benefit in such a vast array of diseases. And it has so many different aspects from the cognitive to the philosophical to the physiological that to not give people access to a tool that is inexpensive and so effective is actually a travesty of healthcare. So I would like to see that integration. And for me personally, this is a platform and springboard to help make that happen more effectively. The very simple idea is to connect all the children in the world at the very same time. So we're organizing a synchronized jump at midnight Greenwich Mean Time. That will obviously be different times around the world. And the idea is for the children to understand, perhaps for the very first time in the history of the world, how it is and how it feels to be connected together 
As you know, yoga stands for, comes from the Sanskrit, to join, to unite. So what we're looking to do is have the children understand when they all join together and are united, both with mindfulness and meditation, that that will bring peace. J for join, U for unite, M for mindfulness and meditation, P for peace. They will all jump together and they will all understand the incredible power of connectivity. Our best wishes there to Ravi and Sushma Banat. I for one am most certainly excited about next year's event already. Whilst in Parliament, we were able to preview the hugely successful documentary, That Sugar Film. We were also joined by Dr. Asim Hotra and of course the Shadow Health Secretary to find out exactly what effects sugar really has on the human body. Luciana, it's lovely to have you with us here this evening. Now, this is a very, very interesting event. Just kindly tell me a bit more about what exactly is happening here this evening. Well, I'm delighted to host this parliamentary screening this evening of that sugar film, which I believe will prompt a really interesting discussion and debate about the content of our food. And I'm looking forward to many parliamentarians from all sides of the House taking part in the discussion and the debate that we're going to have after we've seen the film. For a lot of people, whether they admit it or not, sugar is becoming a very big part in terms of content to their food. Is this something that we should perhaps be concerned about? I mean, for many years, it was never a concern, but now I think we're starting to understand the dangers of it. Should we really be worried about it? Well, I think that the, the real prompt of the film and what we're going to have as part of the discussion is about those foods that you think are healthy and those foods that you think are perhaps diet products and actually in fact are laden with sugar and we're going to see a number of examples of that throughout the course of the film. So what I'm particularly interested in as the Shadow Minister for Public Health is about those hidden sugars in our foods that perhaps people aren't aware of and I'm very clear as a politician that we should be doing everything possible to make sure people really understand what's in the food that they are eating. Asim, as always, it's great to have you with us here this evening. Now, of course, many of our viewers will know for a long time you've been part of a lengthy campaign to really highlight the dangers of sugar. And of course, we're at a film screening which highlights just that. What are your thoughts to be here this evening? Well, it's really good to have an opportunity really for um, this film to be seen by you know, members of parliament, people who have a lot of influence um, around you know, um, legislation, which is really required, to be honest, to have the biggest impact on population health to reduce the burden of obesity and types of diabetes. So it's excellent and, it, and the film itself is very powerful and I'm sure that um, it will resonate you know, with a lot of people watching it. I'm joined now here by MP Keith Faz. Keith, it's great to have you with us here this evening. A very important event and a very strong message, particularly to our Asian community that are watching this. It's a really important event. It was eight years since I've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Therefore, coming to watch this film is extremely important because people do need to realise we are very much in a diabetes crisis. 3.3 million people with diabetes in our community, hundreds of thousands of people have not been diagnosed. Therefore, the work of um, people like Dr. Simal Hotra and D. Dhruv going around the um, country telling them about personal experience. You see, people need personal testimonies, uh, which I think are extremely important, and that is what we feel is in very important indeed. <laughs> Sugar is now found in 80% of the foods we eat, but with the constant confusion over its effects on our health, and with this little person on the way, I feel like I need some definitive answers. The point is to test out a very high sugar diet. How are you going to do that? You want to match averages 40 teaspoons of sugar a day. 40 a day. 
They must be hidden sugars found in commonly perceived healthy foods and drinks. So no soft drink, confectionery or ice cream. People on this planet are growing sicker every day. And many scientists now believe that fructose has a role to play. I'm eating the same amount of calories as I did before, and I'm not feeling full. These calories do dramatically different things on the human body. If I kept going to these levels, would I be knocking on the door of obesity? Definitely. Never got far to go. Any sugar, ground sugar, white sugar, fruit juice concentrate from fruit juice, equal effect on your health. Not feeling very well at all today. My fuse is a lot shorter. Your mental function is just unstable. You've got the signs of a fatty liver. This is the first time I've seen that it can be developed in two or three weeks. <laughs> Whenever you walk into a supermarket, make an immediate turn for the produce aisle and avoid everything in the middle. Sugar's not evil, but life is so much better when you get rid of it. Well, our best wishes there to everybody who is a part of making that documentary. Some very interesting insights to see just how bad sugar is on the human body. We hope many of you have taken note on that. Time for a very short break, but we'll be back in a few moments time, so make sure you join us in part two.